I was ready to write Zack Snyder off. Let him disappear to the wind. And then I watched the uncut version of Rebel Moon, part one, A Chalice of Blood. And I'm still prepared to do the same thing. That's right, I have a confession to make. I am a long time Zack Snyder defender here on this channel. Our reviews will kill you. And uh, if you know anything about me, you know that for very many, many moons, I've been defending Zack Snyder. And then, then that zombie movie came out. And I was like, huh, this looks pretty unprofessional. What's going on here? Was it called Land of the Undead? Or we'll see it later, what it's called. And then I uh, saw Rebel Moon was coming out and was thinking to myself, all right, what's this? Uh, this looks interesting. It's something different. It's a thing. It's not quite Star Wars. But well, yeah, I saw the, the, the regular edition of Rebel Moon. And you may see the reviews up here if I remember to link them. And I savaged it. It was an absolute abomination. But then I watched the director's cut just to torture myself because everybody was having some fun with the Rebel Moon and it was not very good. And then I, I watched the, the director's cut and I was like, two different human beings put together the same movie. How did this happen? It's almost stunning. The first 30 minutes of the movie are completely different. Scenes are out of order. Scenes are recut to different context to contextualize things differently. It's almost an abomination, a travesty, if you will, to watch the original cut and then watch the director's cut. Now, ultimately, I'm going to say that the director's cut still fails on some level because it's still fundamentally the same movie. It's still fundamentally the Seven Samurai without a lot of... I think the biggest problem that serves this movie is that it is it was part one of part two and we knew that going in. And the way they resolve the ending still... It doesn't leave it open for a satisfactory part two. It just leaves us with the protagonist not knowing what's going on and the villains reorganizing. I, it just felt unsatisfying in fact the third act i still think is the weakest part of both both movies but when they recontextualize as much as they did and the first 30 to 45 minutes of footage is completely different if you recall how rebel moon originally opened it opens with an exposition dump by sir anthony hopkins and it and it has a ship traveling through a vagina wormhole and they show up in this vagina wormhole. And they're telling us about the Belisarius. There's just massive, disgusting exposition dump. In the director's cut, you know, they have the thing that's it's called show, don't tell. You want to show how awful the Empire is, how terrible they are. You get all of that and more. It is astonishing what happens in the first 10 minutes of this movie. They have Ed Screen, the villain of the movie. And there's this whole thing. It's it's weird because I couldn't stop looking at it. They have these... Um, it's almost like a femur bone plated in gold or plated in some sort of metal that they use to beat people to death with. And every time it was on screen, it, it's weird because cause they don't answer questions. Because every time on screen, I'm staring at this thing, this femur bone. Because the king of the universe holds it, right? So he clearly either beats people to death with it, just like Ed Screen does, and then they're collecting teeth to make a collage, and the collage is like worshiping the girl that they had assassinated. Like, it's so bizarre. Spoilers, by the way. I'm assuming if you bothered to watch this thing, you've seen the original. And... It's just a stunt. It's it's two. It's complete. Two different, completely movie. It's just it's unbelievable to me. So they have this entire opening sequence that's completely different. 
There's high amounts of violence. Like, the violence is so over the top. Everybody's head is getting blown off. There's full frontal nudity of women not only being stripped, but being branded. Uh, there's a kid beating his own dad's brains in with a with, <laughs> with this, this femur bone thing. And then on top of that, uh, <laughs> Ed Screen picks up his brains. It's like, oh, look at these memories. I remember that this is his memory of this, and this is his memory of that. And I, it just, just, it's so crazy. Only Zack Snyder could come up with this. So we get through all this, and it isn't until you get to the the fight scene in the bar, the most Isley Cantina. So. So what I want to do is just kind of compare and contrast a couple things before we get into what other people are saying. So one major thing that I was thinking is um, I, I'm going to go with Cora because I don't know. Her name is like Ar Arthur Lewis or Parker Lewis can't lose. I'm not sure what her real name is, but let's go with Cora. That actress, first of all, she gets bu -bu 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 ass naked and has a hardcore sex scene, which I was not anticipating. I should have anticipated it. She, in an <laughs> in in um interviews, said how amazing the experience was, where she just gets railed by the by the in in all the interpersonal dialogue. I wish they would have taken this movie edit it out about 40 minutes and you would have had an actual okay movie that people would be willing to watch but when you don't you get garbage in the original part and too long in the second part no one's even going to pay attention to your director's cut when the first cut is such garbage it's it's literally one of the worst two movies i've ever seen rebel moon one and why they're named different things i do not know like, why is one Chalice of Blood, but the other one's Child of Fire? Why? Like, Zack Snyder's so pretentious, it's insane. He's, he's insane. So, we get to see a little bit more about their backstories, and we're getting a little bit more fleshing out of things. There's some cringe moments where the father of the town, Corey, whatever his name, the actor, is just saying, Oh, don't forget to F everything that moves, because it's the harvest time. We should F. And then you get to watch you know, uh, Cora get nailed by the hunter guy because it's just physical. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. All of this is new footage or recontextualized footage, right? And then you get um, even the... So one of the biggest plot holes that people were really annoyed about was the part where they're like, why would a galaxy-spanning empire be worried about feeding their people? with, oh, we need this grain. But if you listen, the dialogue now has been changed and recontextualizes what happened. So in reality, you have Ed Screen's villainous character, and I cannot remember what his name is, but that's okay. He comes down and he goes, I'm looking for rebels. And he clearly knows that someone from this village has been selling excess grain to these rebels. So you're feeding the rebels that he's hunting all over his portion of the galaxy to collect. If he can put down this insurgency, he can go back and be elevated as beyond Admiral. Like maybe he, he has his own career aspirations. All of that is very clear in this cut and is very, very different. So he goes through and he's and he says Oh, I'm I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for these guys. I, I want their, you know, I know there's excess grain here. And then there's this whole dialogue about like, oh, you know, my my army, you know, only goes as far as his stomach can go. So why don't you give that grain to me? It's all a ploy for him to trap the rebels. Before you're thinking like, oh my gosh, he really needs the grain. He doesn't need the grain. He's just using it as a way to exploit and put pressure on this town. He knows that if he puts pressure on this town where the rebels bought their grain from, that there's a possibility that he can smoke out these rebels. It's just a chance he's taking, and he's being as cruel as he usually is because that's what he likes to do. So that fixes that component of that. Then we get to the scene that a lot of people had problems with, which was the most likely cantina scene. They never told us it was a brothel in the original cut. In the original cut, I thought it was just a bar. 
but now it is explicitly told that it's a brothel. So everything that's in it is recontextualized. And the reason why this guy harasses Cora and the farm dude is because he thinks that that's a sex slave that he can buy. So now everything is completely different. And I am confused as to why they cut it this way. All the people who are complaining about that scene, like, oh, there's so much gay stuff in it and all that. It's a brothel. They literally have some weird robot chick thing that's just like, you're supposed to bang everything that moves in this place. Go get to work. It's contextualized so differently that it radically changes the tone of the movie. Now, once you get past that part, things start to get... This is where the wheels fall off the bus. You get the Griffin scene, which is exactly the same, except for the fact that the guy who was enslaving the other guy was just a gambler. I still don't think he deserved to die. But the way they edited the fact that the the bird... He tried to mount the bird, the Griffin thing, and the Griffin didn't like it and then killed him. It kind of changes things contextually. Just like the uh, when they're going to go get Titus and they're trying to pick him up and even Nemesis gets more scenes. Like all of it is recontextualized and significantly better. They actually have lines in this. In fact, they call the guy with the Griffin dude, they call him a coward. Like there's, there's just so much more to it. it. There's another scene. Jimmy, the best character, Sir Anthony Hopkins, was there the entire time. He was trying to rationalize what does he do with his life after the person he devoted his life to and was built to serve has died and moved on. What does he do with his life? And he's trying to rediscover what does life even mean to him. They have this whole part where it's like, oh, we need her ship because it has guns on it. It doesn't just magically show up. They're like, no, the whole village pulls the thing out and the, the kid who's the kid from the first 10 minutes, so that recontextualizes that. It's just, it's a it's a better movie. It's not a good movie, but it's a better movie. The original Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire, is hot garbage. This was at least like a B. It's not a bad movie. But it's not a great movie. So I just I don't understand why you would release your worst part first. That is strange and disturbing to me. Let's briefly take a look at uh, the same person, Paul Tossi, from... Forbes online. We're going to take a look at his articles. I watched Rebel Moon Director's Cut. That's probably enough. I don't know that I would ever watch it again. It was very R rated. I think he claims that Netflix wanted a PG 13 movie. Here's one part that I wanted to re re talk about. There's a scene where this girl is about to get graped by a bunch of soldiers that are been garrisoned on the planet, the, the Vespa planet or Velpa, whatever the hell it's called. Who cares? Um, Cora comes in to interrupt, and I'm like, how does this 90-pound soaking wet girl defeat all these guys? They recontextualize that fight scene. Oh, by the way, the amount of slow mo has been substantially reduced, or it's also been it's also it's been reduced, but it's also recontextualized. If he had removed all the slow mo from the original cut and put in all this other stuff to make the movie better, it would have been a better movie. Um, but she's so violently vicious that they don't have time to react to her. The first two people, she basically like cuts the one dude's arm off and stabs the other guy in the throat and uses him as a body and then starts shooting people in the head. They don't have time to react to her. That makes a lot more sense than this 90-pound girl like physically beating up all these guys. So when you take out some of the slow-mo mo, and she's moving very fast and she's like quickly, efficiently, and brutally maiming, disfiguring, and killing these guys, it makes a lot more sense how she could do it. She's just clearly better trained than they are. She's not out muscling them. So it's just so strange. The original universe, it's it's not as bad as it they say it is. So yeah, here you go. There's a 25 opening minute that's essentially Negan Glenn Bat scene. Yeah, okay, that's fair. But still, it's so different. It's so different from the original. It, there, there's another part. How do the engines work? How do they move from place to place? They have enslaved goddesses to tell for them to like open time warp and space. 
it, the 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 vagina open space thing makes kind of sense because they have these gods enslaved that they feed the dead corpses of the bo uh, of the worlds that they conquer. That sounds cool. That's like f Warhammer 40k level craziness, dark, you know, grim dark nonsense. That's pretty awesome. They're literally force feeding the bodies of the worlds they conquer in order to travel to more worlds. That is pretty cool. Yet they don't explore it in the original movie. They don't do anything. They just, you know, the script is still not good. I think the script needed to be worked on. Um, but the movie is is still it's it's astonishing. It's not that it's a good movie versus a bad movie. It's an a virtually unwatchable movie versus a real movie that had potential. Still not a great movie. But it's an actual movie. And now the Rebel director's cuts are outscoring the dismal original. People are actually looking at it. And they're like, well, this isn't totally garbage. Uh, you have the Rebel's Moon director's cut part one and part two at 29 and 40% perspectively. Part two is better, which I have not gotten to, which I will. But Rebel Moon part one is at 23% and part two is at 17%. Even that line they says Scar Giver, she was called Scar Giver before she even got to the second part of the movie. I just, none of it makes sense. And whoever edited the first movie needs to be fired. And if it's Zack Snyder, he should still be fired. Now here's the, I don't know if this is the sad part, but this is the eventuality when you make foolish decisions. Rebel Moon Director's Cut flops on Netflix Top 10. They released seven hours of movie on one weekend. Who's gonna get to that? Like. It's taken me several days to get to it because I hated the first movie so much it took me three days to watch this damn thing. The third movie sounds unlikely. Yeah, you think? You think you re you released an absolutely dreadful original movie. Why would any normie watch a an extended cut of an actual movie instead of a crap movie? Uh, they had less than 3.6 million on their opening weekends, down from 23.9 for their first movie. Uh, movie in December, and $21.4 million in April for part two. That's pretty bad, and it's going to take word of mouth of people saying, like, this is not as bad as, as the other one. This is a real movie. But does Zack Snyder get the benefit of the doubt? Not anymore. He's burned it all. He's burned every bridge. I can't see it being a success. What do you guys think? Did you watch this? Did you think there was an actual real movie in there? Did it recontextualize everything for you? It did for me. It doesn't make it a good movie, but it does make it a an, a real boy movie. It's not just this garbage pile that was dumped on us. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I have not watched anybody others anybody else's reviews, so all the comments will still be fresh in mind. In my head, I'm going to take a look at the second one. I'm going to watch it because I'm very curious. Again, self-admitted, not Stan of Zack Snyder, but a defender. I 100% defended him, and I will defend some of his stuff. I think Watchmen is fantastic. Batman versus Superman is not as bad as everybody says it is. But again, you know, opinions are what they are, but I think I have an educated opinion on this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, we live stream here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you hung out this long, please subscribe. We could really use your help. Like, share, all those other things. I know it's hard to create a YouTube account, but I recommend it. You get to save a lot of the videos that you like and share them, and you get to help grow content like this. I'm sure there's a lot of other content creators that if you haven't created an account, they would greatly appreciate it, and they'd like your like and subscribe as well. And then you can come back and visit us sometime. So thank you again for watching. I am the man you may know as he from our reviews will kill you. Hopefully this review didn't kill you, but I am on to the next one.